Hello everyone and welcome to 32Soft's May webinar. I'm Denise and with me to present is QAD and MRP expert Don Lindsay. This month we are joined by Nancy McCrimmon as well. Nancy is a QAD implementation and service automation wizard and she will share with us her first-hand SSM super user experience today. Before I hand off to Don, here we are. Um, please know that everyone connects to the webinar already muted, but you can type in questions or comments if you have any at any time throughout the session. Enter them into the bottom of the pane where I have the red arrow pointing, and then during the Q&A we will review the questions in the order they're received. Also, a very brief survey will pop up automatically as you exit the session, and it really takes no time at all to complete. Feedback is quite helpful to us, of course, so if you could hang on and do that, that would be great. And finally, as soon as the replay of today's session is available, I will follow up with our Encore email. It will include a link to the replay, all of today's questions and answers. And now I will hand off to QAD and MRP guru and instructor extraordinaire, Don Lindsay. So, Don, whenever you are ready. Well, good morning. Well, for those of you who are on the East Coast, it's probably afternoon, but uh, out here in sunny California, it's uh, 10 o'clock in the morning. And thank you, Denise, as always, for that nice introduction. Well, here, here we are again in the middle and towards the end of May. And we still find ourselves in the middle of this uh, pandemic and economic sinkhole. We um, all have many things to think about, and so we appreciate you taking some of your time out of your busy day to be with us to continue our discussion regarding uh, service and support functionality and uh, QED. As Denise uh, mentioned, Nancy is with us today, and... Uh, so we are going to try and cut uh, my session a little bit short. But uh, in April, on the 22nd, we kind of covered the uh, background of service support, how to set it up, a little bit about bombs and routings, install base, calls, car, sir, pending orders, deep orders, and then talked about uh, engineers and uh, areas. So today... We want to talk about uh, warranties and contracts, and we'll we'll try to get into uh, material orders. But if uh, I don't find uh, we have the time for material orders, we're going to have a uh, third section of service and support uh, in September, uh, same month that uh, they're going to reconvene the Midwest user group in uh, Grand Rapids, which we all hope we can. Uh, Attend. So we're going we're gonna to start off with a discussion of warranties and contracts. Again, service and support is, uh, is different. Uh, for a lot of us, it's the uh, work orders, purchase orders, sales orders, all the things we're used to with our manufacturing environment. But now with service and support, we're outside of the organization. So it takes kind of a mindset change to get used to service and support. Lots of resources out there. Uh, the knowledge base, uh, I've got highlighted the service and support uh, training guide and the user guide, which are uh, just about mandatory for uh, help with understanding service and support. And obviously, hopefully our webinars assist in that area. Lots of new terms, holy mackerel, uh, material orders. We learned about install base. Today we're going to talk about warranties and cat, uh, uh, contracts, uh, charge codes, all sorts of uh, new concepts and new words. So as always, a solid set of work instructions and a company data dictionary is going to help uh, for this. And obviously, uh, work instructions for every menu that we're going to go through. How do you uh, fill it out? As I looked at the uh, contract maintenance, 23 screens you uh, get to navigate through. RMAs, which we'll cover in September, there's 35 screens. So it's uh, a fairly uh, comprehensive set of uh, information. So work instructions are going to be very helpful. 
As uh, with last week, uh, we're not going to cover inquiries and reports. Uh, I'm assuming that uh, there's enough reports and views and whatnot in QAD that you're going to get the information out that you put in. And uh, I'm going to try not to spend uh, any amount of time on the financial side of the functionality as we'll cover that uh, in uh, subsequent webinars. The process maps, great, good stuff. If you've got access to your process maps in EE, uh, very helpful in understanding, implementing, operating uh, the uh, functions within the service and support area. So today we're going to talk about uh, the service types, warranties, and contracts. Uh, we'll talk about the uh, characteristics of uh, the warranties and contracts. Uh, how you set up warranty types, how you use contract types. Uh, these service types tie together all of the coverage information, how you treat and set up uh, end user and customer records, items that are to be supported, and they basically hit just about everything in service and support. So they're foundational to the way that we deal with the service and support uh, module. Warranty types uh, in 1137, service item maintenance, or as we saw, could be the last frame of 1.4.1, the item master, you set up uh, the item and then uh, attach to that, almost like a component in a product structure, the warranty type that is associated with that particular item. The warranty types and uh, terms, conditions then, uh, enter into the install base and update the install base for uh, warranties. Contracts are defined in uh, 11.5.10, contract maintenance. Uh, you define a contract type and that becomes almost a template for which you can use to develop individual contracts for customers, uh, end users, and items. And so the contract line items uh, define how a particular item is covered, terms and conditions for those uh, contract uh, items. As I said, the impact of service uh, types are ubiquitous in the service support module. Warranties, uh, call, RMA, quotes, call activity, uh, service quote maintenance, contracts. You set up these service types one for calls and one for RMAs. In call management control, 11124, you define what kind of service type is for calls. And then if you're dealing with the RMA functionality, which we'll cover in September, you go into 11724 and define uh, that service. So the service types, both the quantity or the warranties and the contracts have uh, various attributes associated with the product line dur duration. Uh, response time, price lists, how you treat RMAs, priorities. And so these can apply to both either or uh, warranties and contract types, however you want to uh, set them up. Again, one of the benefits of service and support is its flexibility. The service type product line basically tells how service and support is going to interface with accounting. In the 11 24 service maintenance you've got this little flag here says do you want to use the item product line and we've talked about item product lines uh, in several webinars uh, previously if you uncheck that then you can set up your own product lines and have those uh, referenced in both the warranty and the contract types so this is a key field as to how you're going to handle the uh, accounting side of services service support in terms of those product lines. Uh, duration of contracts. Warranties are basically defined in terms of days. And so that uh, helps us define the install base from the date that the item is in injected or in, uh, installed into the install base. It's going to take the warranty as you define it in the warranty type maintenance and uh, give that the warranty expiration date. So it adds the warranty in days to the install base to get the warranty uh, 
uh, install bait expiration. Uh, in terms of contracts, uh, contracts use months for duration. So warranties are days, contracts are months, and that's kind of a, another one of those mindset things that you have to uh, get inculcated into your uh, thought process for service and support. And this uh, gives the service and support module the ability to have the start date of the contract and then calculate what the end date of that uh, contract is. And we'll talk about uh, the timelines that are associated with that. Uh, response times. The response time in terms of warranty, again, is terms of days. So that calculates the warranty end date. In terms of uh, the calls, it sets the next status date that we talked about last week, the time and the coverage or the response hours that are defined for your call maintenance. In terms of contracts, you can define how many uh, hours per day, when it starts, when it ends. Uh, are you covered Saturdays, Sundays, holidays? So those are defined in both the warranty type and the contract type. There's service price list, which we'll talk about next uh, September. When an item in uh, the warranty has a price list associated with it, uh, that is going to define the uh, price list for the call activity recording. In terms of uh, RMAs, you can make the system uh, have a restocking charge, or uh, if you want to have a part returned before you ship out a replacement, you can check this little box and that will uh, tell the system that you can't uh, ship a part out until uh, the replacement has uh, been received or the bad part has been received. So there's uh, the attribute, same with contract maintenance. Uh, you can set the priorities based on uh, the warranty type. If you set the priority for a particular warranty, maybe one warranty has a higher priority in your business uh, process than another, you can set that. And then in terms of call maintenance that we looked at last week or last month, uh, that will set the priority for uh, any calls that come in according to that particular warranty. Uh, the same with contracts, that priority uh, contract type can then be fed down into the individual contracts that are made for your parts and your end users. So uh, warranties can be defined by the warranty type and you can tie those to an end user type. So you can customize warranties for different types of end users. Uh, and then in the contracts, we talked about the contract price and duration. So service uh, coverage makes it easier to automate the collection of service call charges through call activity recording. You can do it either at a high level, such as uh, grouping of parts, labor, travel expenses, etc., or at the detail level for some combination of uh, preventing maintenance overtime uh, or emergency overtime. The service coverage supports fixed price billing, and we'll talk about billing uh, a little bit later this morning. Uh, limits of coverage can also be defined in either a particular service, so that parts exampled are covered up to 1,000, and uh, PM level might, uh, labor might be covered to 2,000, or some combination. So again, very flexible in terms of uh, how you define those uh, service coverages. Warranties are uh, set up, and again, the warranty types are associated with a particular item, as it said, almost uh, in terms of a bill of material. And this is a written guaranteed issue to a purchaser of an article by its manufacturers promising to repair or replace and we can set up both repair and replacement uh, circumstances within a specified period of time based on uh, a set of agreed-upon circumstances. So you can set up 
different warranty types for different types of parts for different types of end users again uh, the flexibility in the general flow that we looked at last week you set up the behavior of service and support define and implement your business decisions and then the second is to set up your warranty and contract process this is where you define your customer relationships levels of service duration billing etc then that feeds down into call management and into service and uh, support call activity recording the setting up of warranty codes fairly straightforward in 1124 you set the uh, ship to so that uh, when you ship to the install base you uh, set the warranty then we define the warranty types then attach those warranty types to items and set the install base on the 1137 to yes so that we can associate a particular warranty type to an item then you create install base records either manually or sim or however you want to do that and then ultimately you want to check the box in uh, the 1124 to create the install base record automatically upon the posting of the invoice for the sales order so that's how you set up the warranty codes you define the warranty codes you can define standard 90-day extended extended one-year holidays I've seen organizations with uh, 20 different uh, service types again you can uh, define that according to the end user type that you want the durations the response times etc so that you uh, create a warranty code for everything that is going to be in the install base uh, if you want to use the end user type you have to set up at least one uh, warranty type with a blank uh, end user and then that becomes kind of like a uh, template for the warranty types that you're going to create then in service and supporter and call activity recording like we saw uh, last month you can see uh, contract information warranty information uh, what type of services uh, associated if you've got any limit uh, qualifiers that we'll talk about in terms of inventory cert codes or work codes that is all visible in the call activity recording the service timeline starts off with the part being installed in the install base and that uh, typically is when you invoice for that item that creates the record in the install base then you've got uh, some period of warranty coverage three month 90 one year however you're going to de define that and during that period uh, you are going to be negotiating with your uh, end user with your customer for the uh, eventual use of a warranty contract or not a warranty but a, a service contract and so the service contract uh, takes effect after the warranty has expired that can be for any uh, amount of time uh, this has uh, the limits the controls that tell the system how you're going to bill for particular activities in the uh, service contract window and then after the service contract is uh, expired uh, where there is no contract then you can set default service types uh, and have coverages uh, build according to uh, not having either a warranty or a service contract so each item usually goes through those three separate uh, time spans for uh, warranty and service coverage and then uh, the expiration of the coverage the contract life cycle uh, is you first of all set up all your uh, contract controls uh, 11 524 then you define your uh, contract types and the contract types uh, are very similar to the warranty types but these then are used by the contract maintenance as templates for particular contracts to end users or items then uh, there is a, another functionality within the 
uh, contract that you can define additional charges so that if you've got uh, special billing or special, special circumstances uh, with a particular end user or customer, you can define those in the 1157. Then uh, some companies go through a quote process. The quoting process basically is the same functionality as creating uh, a contract, but uh, as we'll see, uh, it's got some sort of special circumstances. Then you create the contract, you print the contract, get the customer to agree to it, and sign it, and then you go through a billing process, and we'll talk about the billing process, how uh, contracts are billed, they're actually billed uh, through the sales order mechanism. Then if you want to renew contracts after they have been uh, expired, you can renew uh, through a couple of uh, different functions, and then once the contracts are all uh, finally billed and uh, expired, then you can delete and uh, archive uh, contracts off to uh, tables within QED. So the contract uh, control file, 11524, this is where you set your basic general contract parameters. Uh, are you going to use single or multi-lines, comments? Uh, do the items have to be in the install base? There's an important question you need to consider. Uh, the next service sales order, and this is how the billing is going to take place, how the contract pricing is going to be uh, validated and uh, calculated. Uh, are you going to use quotes? Uh, what contract prefix are you going to use? Are you going to create uh, preventive maintenance calls? Uh, so those are the sections. Then again, in the later versions of QED, QED has taken some of the accounting functions and put them into this 36.9 menu section so that each uh, accounting portion of a control file has its now unique process for uh, the service accounting control. So here you're going to define the revenue types, uh, how you're going to treat uh, limits. You can have uh, a credit hold. This is where you are going to define the uh, use the item product line that we talked about uh, earlier, and then uh, in terms of call management, are you going to invoice from recording? Uh, are you going to use projects, etc.? So that's the accounting process in the 36.9.10 or in 5.24, depending on what version you're using. Uh, there is now the service contract billing frame, which uh, allows you to set uh, whether you're going to charge uh, generate invoices for non-charge lines. Uh, are you going to bill in the arrears or deferred? I talked about that a little bit. Uh, Period-based billing. Uh, are you going to prorate periods? Uh, and then are you going to start your uh, service billing from the warranty? So these are all settings that you're going to go through in that 36.9.10. The contract. Uh, is an optional function. As I said, depending on your business function, your business process, are you going to want to put in the control of having a uh, contract maintenance? Uh, there you're going to create uh, a quote in quote maintenance. You're going to print the quote and then once the quote is approved and uh, the vendor, the customer <coughs> approves it, then you're going to go ahead and release the quote to a uh, contract. So you can release all the lines at once or a number of lines. Uh, invoices can't be generated for contract quotes because obviously they're not uh, valid contracts yet. <clears throat> and contract quotes have no effect on the general ledger. So it depends on how uh, your business process is if you want to use uh, contract quotes or not. Uh, there's several ways to create contract quotes. You can create it uh, straight through maintenance. Uh, you can copy a quote to another quote. You can copy a quote from a current contract. Or uh, if you go 11.5.13.10, uh, 
uh, you can go through the renewal process and report functionality to create those uh, contract quotes. Contract quote maintenance uh, looks uh, very much like the uh, or contract type looks very much like the warranty. You set uh, however many different kinds of codes you feel are going to be required to take care of time and material charges, giveaways, free uh, things that are not covered by warranty. So again, you can have as many of these uh, contract types as you feel you need. Uh, you can define product lines, durations, uh, response times, those, and then again with uh, contract coverage, both uh, you can start in end days and have multiple coverage of weekdays or holidays or weekends, however you set your uh, contract types. Service limits uh, are the ability to define who is responsible for paying for a particular uh, service activity. It's to establish the limits for uh, the type of work, uh, the service, whether it be regular label, parts, uh, airfare, meals, etc. Uh, you can define uh, the percentage coverage, maybe 100% of regular labor is uh, covered, but no uh, overtime. Uh, you can uh, pay for or not hotels, airfare, etc. And then you can set uh, coverage limits based on uh, how much the customer is responsible for versus the uh, supplying organization. So you can set uh, ceiling limits on those various types of activity for service. Service uh, limits are uh, used to establish uh, either at a high level, uh, labor parts expenditure, you can set the uh, service percentage either in a percentage or a dollar limit, or you can do it at a detail level through the work code or service category uh, for any particular work code and then the service category associated with that work code and again the uh, coverage percentage versus the dollar uh, ceiling on the uh, limit. So again, very flexible uh, in the contract type. If you define a sort code and it's entered there, then you must, uh, you can't define the service category, but if you define a work code, you uh, can then uh, supply a service category for that. So this is, uh, I found this somewhat confusing on the part of some customer uh, service representatives, but once you uh, understand how those limits are set either through the sort code or the work code, you can uh, set those for any particular item. You can limit uh, the contracts either in terms of a list price list. Uh, you can have a charge code that would uh, absorb any over limit uh, charges, and then you can uh, have a charge code for defining those limits. The benefits of limits are that it, number one, supports the tracking of consumption and how that relates to the limits. Uh, contracts types, as I said, can be uh, used as templates and limits can be copied and then modified on either contracts or quotes. Uh, the limits become an integral part of the contract. If the contract limits associated with the contract change, the contract will not be changed. So if you change the type, it's not going to change the uh, contract. It's kind of like the bill of material on the manufacturing side. Once you cut the work order, uh, the bill of material changes don't affect the uh, work order. Limits can be renewed as part of uh, contract and contract renewal. Uh, and you can copy limits from the header into individual lines and then modify those individual lines if you want. So each individual line can have a different coverage and uh, limit detail for each item. In summary, contract limits, uh, you've got to have the contract limit set to yes in 11.524. Uh, it can be used 
and only effective when it is copied into a contract. So the limits have to be in the contract to be valid. And then they're only checked when you use call activity recording, because that is how the system records activity against those contract lines. Uh, the contract design, there's two ways that you can create contracts. This was implemented a couple of uh, years ago in the services support module. You can have a collection of end users with items, or you can have a collection of items with one or more end users. So this, uh, your choice affects how the frame sequence is going to appear to you in the contract maintenance. Uh, it helps define defaults for one car contract level to another, uh, taxes, and preventing maintenance schedules all follow this same process. So if you check the box for end editors, or items with end users, you're going to create the header. Then you're going to default items that are going to be used on the contract. Then you're going to associate end users with those items and then detail out the uh, specifics for the lines on the items with start dates, uh, line item limits, contract, uh, PM schedules, etc. Then you've got the ability to add additional charges and finally set up your trailers. If you choose the option for end users with items, uh, you're going to have the header, then you're going to define the end users, then you're going to define the items associated with those end users, again, additional charges and uh, trailers. So uh, here's the box. If this is checked, then you're going to use uh, items and end users. If it's no, then you're going to use end users with items. So this, uh, again, defines how the screen flow is going to present itself to the customer service representative. Here you've got the uh, header frames. There's the box. Uh, this indicates who's going to receive the invoice. Uh, there's the service type associated with the contract. Uh, you can have master contracts. Uh, the billing cycle, which we'll talk about uh, in just a second. And then the dates that are associated with the contract based on the contract type and the duration of that uh, contract type. There's the price list. Uh, you can indicate the source of the contract uh, information, uh, either from uh, install base, sales order, or sales order quotes. Uh, you can hold contracts. Uh, if you go in and check that box, uh, there's the bill and arrears, which we'll talk about uh, in a little bit. There's the revenue type. Uh, this indicates your uh, period-based billing. This is whether the system is going to synchronize with your calendar or with your accounting uh, time periods, and then uh, whether you're going to prorate uh, periods across the contract. And then this determines uh, if you're going to have contract visits, which uh, determines your PM uh, schedule. So if you're going to have contract uh, preventive maintenance scheduling, very easy. This uh, allows you to manage the type of service to prevent make, uh, breakdowns or other serious problems with your uh, product. Make sure that it's uh, being maintenance properly, oil, uh, preventive, those kinds of things. Here's in the contract maintenance, you've got this little pop-up menu that uh, allows you to delve the number of uh, visits that you're going to have. Uh, are you going to assign engineers? You can set PM for either for end users or for items, depending on how you've got your uh, contract set up. Uh, you can create calls for PMs in the contract call, uh, control. So if you check this box, every time you create a uh, new contract, the preventive maintenance schedule is all uh, automatically going to be created for you. And so this is very handy. I'm sure Nancy will uh, 
talk about that when she uh, covers that. Uh, here's the preventive maintenance detail. This pop-up allows you to uh, modify that uh, in the contract itself. If you schedule calls, uh, here's the additional charges that you've got. You can create uh, any discount, uplift uh, on the contract itself on a whole or at the line level. <coughs> and uh, these additional charges uh, display in the separate lines on the contract tailor or uh, the contract invoice. So you can have these uplifts or discount codes associated with either items or the contract itself. The billing for contracts is done in the contract billing uh, menu. Uh, you set up your cycle code, then you release the billing to invoice, uh, and then there's a couple of uh, options for reversal of billing errors and any date corrections that you might need to process. So some of the questions you need to consider when you look at uh, contract billing, how often do I uh, bill it? Uh, am I going to bill in advance for next month or am I going to bill in the arrears for last month? Uh, who typically receives the invoice? What kind of information needs to appear on the uh, contract itself that has to do with the invoice sort uh, fields that we uh, are going to define? And then the billing release to invoice is done in 11.5. 18.13, and what this does is it actually does not use the service and support module to do the billing. The billing takes place in the standard sales order functionality so that uh, it's all uh, coordinated through that uh, sales order invoice, invoice print and post, and then uh, to the general ledger for uh, the billing. You first of all have to set up uh, billing cycle codes. Uh, sometimes you bill monthly, sometimes quarterly, sometimes annually. Uh, I've seen biannually. Uh, so you set up your, co your codes uh, and then the quantity to bill, uh, depending on what your uh, duration is. Then you determine whether you're going to bill in the arrears and this is uh, taking place again at the end of each billing cycle uh, for the activity that has uh, happened before. Uh, as I mentioned, the pro-based billing or period-based billing uh, indicates whether the contract is going to be synchronized with your calendar months or with the uh, beginning and ending dates of the contract itself. So that's a question your accountants are going to have to uh, come up with. Uh, if you prorate partial periods, the system has a formula there that uh, will allow the system to calculate the correct uh, price for uh, the contract if you bill mid-month or you start the uh, contract mid-month, depending on how you're going to uh, set that up. So you, you manage this in the 36.9.10 by this uh, revenue code. Uh, either accrued, deferred, or cash. You set up your revenue accounts, uh, run the revenue recognition, and then defer or view the deferred accru accrued records in uh, the reports that are available to you. Uh, the billing customer or end user is uh, determined here in 36.9.10, whether you're going to uh, bill the end user or the customer. Uh, there's the bill summary flag, which allows you to set up uh, the invoice format. Uh, you can invoice up to 9,000 or 999 lines. Uh, you can detail this out as the tax attributes and your general ledger and product codes. So the billing release to in, uh, or billing release to invoice is done in 11.5.18.13. And this generates that uh, sales order we saw in the contract control file that uh, then creates the sales order. And then the sales order goes through the normal billing cycle of uh, 793 and 794 for 
generate the invoice. You can renew contracts. Uh, the only rule is you can't reuse the same number for contracts. So you have to change the uh, contract number, but then you can uh, have it for the next period or renew for whatever period you've got. You can do this through 11.5.13.8, the renew single contract. Uh, contracts are always defined with a start and an end date. And then you can uh, either update the end date through uh, contract maintenance, or you can set the auto renew to uh, yes, or you can copy an existing contract to a new contract, depending on what you want. You can only uh, renew a contract once it has been completely billed through the uh, invoice billing to uh, contract. So there's uh, a number of contact uh, utilities that uh, you can use. Uh, contract next uh, billing adjustment. You can recalculate uh, initialized list price if you want to change that or change your deferred and accrued accounts or update uh, your contract revenue accounts. So those are the revenues. Warranties and contract functionality and QED is uh, very flexible and can be kind of complex. So it requires a very thorough understanding of the functionality and the flow of the contract process in your organization. But it can be very effective in minimizing uh, the follow-up recording and execution of revenue generated from the service and support module. So, Denise, Nancy, that uh, kind of finishes up the discussion of warranties and contracts. I'll turn it back over to you, and uh, you can take it from there. Great. Thank you so much, Don. Fantastic, as always. As mentioned at the beginning, um, Nancy McCrimmon is here to share some of her insights as an SSM super user who has hands-on experience with every part of SSM. So Nancy, whenever you're ready. Hello everybody, um, I'm Nancy McCrimmon. In my previous life, I was the operation and IT manager for Canada for a global healthcare company. And we manufactured patient monitors, anesthesia machines. We had um, a robust service business with field and depot repairs, loaners, um, demo equipment, service contracts. And I just thought I'd give a little bit of my thoughts on the SSM module, which we love because it really helped us to, you know, um, optimize our service revenue. So um, can you go to the next slide, please, Denise? Uh, we basically used almost every feature of the SSM module. Um, it was um, before that we managed our service business in an access database in Excel spreadsheets, so it was very manual. And this module allowed us to manage all parts of our service business. Like I said, we have um, service parts, exchange parts, contracts. We had our um, field engineers with service parts. Because Canada is a large country, some of our reps covered an entire province. So there was like long windshield times and it was critical for parts to be available um, when they went to do service calls. Um, ISB was great for tracking of serialized products, and it was really easy to pull out data if there was ever a recall. Um, we also used um, PMs, preventative maintenance schedules, um, with all medical equipment, obviously, there was uh, a schedule for the monitors to be serviced and calibrated. Um, SSM allowed us transaction visibility for exchange parts in the call management and service parts orders. And um, the call queue allows us to manage what the volume of a workload would be for a particular FE. They really liked it because they knew what the upcoming month was going to be. And what the 
module allowed us to do too was to manage our service contracts. So we loaded up all the service contracts and we had a number of different um, type so that you know we had like a basic premium so what Don talked about with the coverage limits it was great um, and it also allows us to track the tech support calls a lot of our reps spent time making um, supporting our customers over the phone so the call management the calls allowed us to track that time before it was like you know, you spend so much time on PMs, installation calls, but a lot of it was just on support calls. So SSM was great. Um, and what this does is it allowed us to track the actual cost of a product during its entire life cycle. Um, when we when we analyzed our calls, we were able to drill down to warranty and repair issues for a product. So when we introduced a new product, it gave us an accurate snapshot of the actual cost. So we were able to um, price a new model uh, much more accurately than before. And um, basically, this module just really allowed us to capture all of the areas of our service business and grow that. And we knew that we were capturing not only the warranty costs, but repair costs, and also any of the support time. And it, it allowed us to reduce the downtime of a piece of equipment for a hospital. Some of our smaller hospitals didn't uh, have a lot of spare equipment laying around. so. This allowed us to reduce any downtime. Um, and, you know, overall, for our business, SSM was fantastic. It was, like, great um, because it allowed us to capture everything um, regarding a piece of equipment and the servicing of it. Thank you, Nancy. Excellent. Um, before we do move into the Q&A, and we do have a couple of questions or comments, I'll, I'll check in just a second. I wanted to note that despite our team's broad and deep working knowledge of the SSM module, 32Soft does not do SSM implementations. But because we don't implement, we can be completely objective about your use of the module. So if you need some help, deciding whether to use SSM or if you are using it already but are unsure whether you're optimizing its use, we may be able to help you with a pre-assessment or assist with an evaluation or some consulting. So I just wanted to let you know that um, we can help even though we don't implement. And we do have an online questionnaire of about 15 questions as of course we'd need to know things like whether your products are registered or serialized or if you have service contracts, things of those sort. Um, we will include the questionnaire link with the replay when we do publish it or if you wanted it sooner, we can certainly provide it to you upon request. So that being said, let's just move right along to the Q&A and there is where you will enter any questions you have if you haven't already. And I was just going to make a, a comment, Denise. Mm -hmm. uh, it, 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 we all understand what uh, COVID-19 is. And uh, there's a lot of companies that don't use service and support. Uh, I think the intimidation level of service and support is, uh, is kind of high. But uh, if you've done any uh, research into the literature over the last uh, two months, it's becoming uh, probably pretty uh, much of a mandatory that uh, manufacturers distributors are going to have to be able to track completely where product is uh, from, who did it, when it was produced, you know, have you had a test, uh, whatever uh, set of circumstances are going to be required by the uh, FDA and the government. Uh, and services support is the excellent tool to handle that. As Nancy said, uh, the install base, uh, the ability to track uh, the number of calls, who did it, uh, where it was, it's all in one central uh, database. Ask, access uh, databases and spreadsheets are great for uh, accounting people, but for customer service, warranties, contracts, you need a 
a standard set of data that relates back to the bill of material, the routers, how it was produced, when it was produced. Uh, and so services support uh, gives you that uh, functionality and contracts and warranties are, are a huge part of that, uh, that exercise. So COVID-19 is uh, changing our lives, ladies and gentlemen, it is. For sure. In September, uh, we're going to, since I didn't have time to uh, cover material orders uh, today, uh, we're going to cover material order functionality, uh, return uh, material authorizations, RMA, RTSs, return to suppliers, uh, price lists, and uh, some additional uh, services support functionality in the September uh, time frame. I think it's the 23rd of September. So if we didn't talk about uh, your favorite part of service and support, uh, we should be able to cover that uh, later in the fall. So yes. yes, excellent. And and yes, as far as more questions as well, anything, any questions, feel free to just give us a call or drop us an email. And any questions that we do receive, we'll, we will answer and post with the replay when it's published. So we'll get to everybody and get your questions answered if you have any after this session. Um, but that was the last one I received for now, so we will go ahead and move on and try to keep on track as far as time. Um, we do have a couple of upcoming webinars in, let's see, we have the June, as you can see. I'm just thinking I didn't add the September that Don was just speaking no. about, but That's we do have um, more. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't do that, but you spoke about it during and then just now, Don. Yeah. So. Um, we don't have the registration link up for September yet, but I will get to that after today. But we do have registration links for both June, um, more tips to manage Q80 inventory, as well as July for purchasing new ideas and practical tips on the 22nd. So um, we do take a summer break in August, but as you know, we'll be ready with more SSM topics in September. Links to register for our webinars are always available on our website and at the bottom of all of our communications. So again, I'll try to get September added before you receive the um, encore, the follow-up email next week. Um, to wrap up today, we know that uh, management is of any after-sales activity is essential, as Don and Nancy has, have both pointed out. And whatever the method, a solid system, will improve products because you'll be tracking performance accurately and throughout the life cycle. So products will improve, which will also reduce warranty claims and enhance the customer experience, which will increase retention and renewals. And of course, we need to remember always that a customer is never out of warranty, even if his product is. Um, Don, Nancy, is there anything else we want to add before we close out for today. No, I'm good. Thank you very much. Thanks for yeah. everyone joining. Yeah, just a uh, another plug for uh, service support. I think in uh, <laughs> today's uh, environment, I think anybody who is uh, faced with the uh, problems that we see in the pandemic and the economic downturn, service and support is another source of revenue uh, and as uh, Denise points out, enhance customer service. You, your customer is number one, and uh, these tools in the service and support module just uh, give you the capability to make his life easier. Yes. Yeah, well put, Don. And I also did, um, during some additional reading on service and support, did see a statistic somewhere that 63% manage it as a profit center versus a cost center. I thought that was pretty interesting, too. Yes. Very interesting, and I see why it is your favorite module, Don. It is. It is. <laughs> I, I very much enjoy it. I've been working with it since 1999. It's, uh, it's a good tool. Long time. Good set of yeah. tools. Great. Well, thank you, everybody. Thanks so much for your time today. I hope you will return for our webinar next month on the 22nd. And until then, have a super day and keep safe and healthy. Thanks again. Yes. Thanks, Don. Thanks, Nancy. Thank you very much. Have a nice Bye -bye. day. Bye-bye.